What's good ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and today I'm going to be talking about my experience being an Amazon seller through something called Amazon FBA. Um, FBA just stands for Fulfillment by Amazon, which means you buy the product, you send it to their warehouse, and then they will distribute it across the country and they'll do the return. But of course with that comes a cost. Uh, you need to pay for them holding it, shipping it, taking returns, customer service, yada, yada, yada. I've been doing this for a little bit now. Um, if not a year, pretty close to it. And I've learned a ton, a ton. And I want to share that information with you because I don't want you to repeat the same mistakes that I made. And at the end of the video, I will give you a authentic breakdown of how much I made or how much I lost overall. So I have some notes here to go over. That's why you'll see me glancing down occasionally. But the first step is to find a good product. What is a good product? A good product is something that people are going to want to buy, that they're searching, preferably not seasonal. You want something that doesn't have a ton of competition and something that you can find a large price to value discrepancy. So the way that was recommended to me to do this was that you would go through Amazon and you would just search random products. And if you found a product that you liked that you could see yourself selling, you would then go to Alibaba.com, which is essentially Amazon in China. And more often than not, you can find the exact same product and see what that price is. And the reason for that is because many of these individuals that are selling on Amazon and even Walmart, they aren't Amazon or Walmart themselves. They're actually third party sellers that are selling on behalf of the platform with their permission. And so if they're doing it, you can do it too. At least that's the concept. So you try to essentially white label your product, which means you're taking a product off of Alibaba. You're going to put your logo and brand on it, maybe some custom packaging, and then you're going to sell it in a different market. For me, that was the United States where I reside. So you, I had this long Excel sheet and I was searching all these different things. You have to keep in mind though, that the price you see on Alibaba is more often than not contingent on quantity order. And even then, the culture is a little bit different from my understanding in that the price is always negotiable. So always try to negotiate the price. I won't get into how to do that. There are different videos uh, explaining that from other people who do a good job. And the other thing is that's the price for the product. When you want to print your logo on it and put custom packaging, that price is going to go up even more. You're going to want to ship it to the US, obviously, so that's going to be even more. So if you're seeing, oh my gosh, this product's $2 and it's selling for $20 on Amazon, that could be a good deal, but you need to account for all the factors. And in my experience, the products that have the highest margin typically seem to be the more complicated products. So the first thing that really drew me was wireless earbuds because I actually needed a pair and I was like, this is a great idea. I'm trying to start this business because people frame it as kind of like a passive income source. And I also need wireless earbuds, so why not try a bunch of them from China? So I did my due diligence, and long story short is what they advertise is not what you're necessarily going to get. I was trying to find earbuds that were completely waterproof, and every time I got to the waterproof testing, they would always fail. Fortunately, Alibaba is good in the sense that I would always get my refund, but just be you know, cautious of that. That was a lot of time that I spent you know, trying to find the right product and then actually waiting for it to get here uh, so that I could actually test it out. So I ended up shifting to something that was easier because I had spent so long trying to do those earbuds and it just wasn't working out. I switched to wireless computer mouses and uh, let's 
let's just skip the part where I do the testing and all that. We get to the point where the product is good. I have custom packaging that I got off of Fiverr, uh, which is like a freelancing website, which is really nice. And then I released the product at Amazon and what do you know? Nobody showed up. And the reason for that is because when you're Googling something, restaurants near me, auto body shop near me, um, haircut near me, whatever, Google, Amazon, YouTube, you're clicking on the first page. You're not going to the 10th page and then looking at all of those results. And the way you get to the first page is you have the strongest listing and history of sales on Amazon. But if you're a new seller, how do you do that? Well, the answer is that you start ads, okay? But the thing with ads is you need to figure out how to target your ads to the individuals that you want to target them to. Um, and that's like a whole science in and of itself, right? Like people have their own careers built on that. So on Amazon, they'll have like, if you start a campaign, you'll have like keyword search that you want it to pop up for. And then you'll even have, you'll even have like no words. So for me, it was like, Bluetooth was a no word because the mouse was wireless through a USB plug, but it was not Bluetooth. So if anybody searched Bluetooth, the ad would not show up for, for my product. And the reason for that is they might click on it thinking it's a Bluetooth mouse and then find out it's not. And I just paid money for them to click on that ad. So I reached out to Reddit. Uh, there's an Amazon FBA subreddit. And I was like, hey guys, I can't sell this product. It's actually a good product. What do I do? And a lot of people said, you need to strengthen your keywords and your pictures need to be better, right? Like you might think it's good. And if you ask your friends and family, they might say it's good. But if you give it to a random person you don't know and you say, here's one product, here's another product, which one are you going to buy? That will determine whether you have a good enough listing or not. Now I did that and I was still running ads and it still was not selling. Part of that was probably contributed to the fact that I didn't know how to run the ads optimally, uh, that my listing perhaps wasn't optimized, but another factor was that I didn't have reviews. So how did I get reviews? Well, Amazon has this program where they will essentially send out products to individuals for free in exchange for them or to review it. There's a caveat, which is these people don't need to review it if they receive the product. And most times when they do that, it's either because they forgot or that they really just don't like the product. So they're trying to save you from yourself. But these individuals have been invited from Amazon uh, to review because of their history of leaving good reviews that have a lot of upvotes. So they're seen as reputable reviewers. They're not just, you know, random people that made an Amazon account yesterday. So a prerequisite to get these reviewers to review your product is obviously you need to send them the product for free, but the product you're sending must be a trademarked uh, business name. And so that was the next step is I think I paid around $500 to do it myself to get the name trademarked, which was Giga Gaming. That was the name. And I tried to market to a gaming industry thinking I could have the exact same product, but if it's marketed as a gaming mouse, then I can sell it for more because gamers are willing to pay more for the same products. At least that was the theory. Now I got this thing trademarked, this business name, Giga Gaming, and it was actually pending at the time because that takes quite a while. Amazon approved it. I then went for the maximum amount of reviewers, which is 30. So 30 products they're sending out, that means the maximum amount of reviews you can have is 30. If you already have 30 reviews for your product, you cannot enroll in this program. And this is critical 
which is the price you sell it at influences the perceived value of the product. And I'll get to that a little bit later with a point that will really stick home, but my listing wasn't dialed in because the friends and family around me wanted to support me, but they were being too nice that they weren't being helpful. And so when I send out all these products to these people, they're saying, oh, this mouse is uncomfortable to use for longer than 30 minutes, or, oh, this mouse is a little bit smaller than what I'm used to, or, oh, this product is blah, 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 right? Not Bluetooth. All of these things could have been fixed had I been diligent, more diligent beforehand. Like I had marked it as Bluetooth initially, thinking that it was gonna pop up in search results more, but it ended up biting me in the ass when somebody said, this isn't a Bluetooth mouse. Somebody said, this is a smaller mouse than I expected. So what did I do? I went back in the listing. Not only did I remove the Bluetooth feature, I marketed as gaming mouse for small hands. Then another person said, this is a pretty inexpensive mouse. It's not a gaming mouse. So I got rid of the gaming, uh, the gaming name and I said, this is a small non-Bluetooth mouse for people who want to travel. It's an easily dispensable mouse. You don't have to worry about losing it because it's only 10 to $15. So what I did to try to remedy this situation uh, was improve the listing, as I just said, but also to get friends and family to raise that rating back up. Because if your Amazon rating is three stars, it doesn't matter whether it's on the first page, I'm personally not gonna click on that ad. And if I am on the listing and I see it has three stars and it seems like the reviews are pretty legit, I'm not gonna buy the product. It doesn't have a great reputation. So I actually asked my friends and family to buy the product and raise the rating, which is technically against Amazon's terms and conditions. But if they're buying the product from different accounts, from different, you know, Wi-Fi, so they have different IP addresses, you should be okay. The way I really sold this to my friends and family is like, hey, tell me how this can be better, but leave a good review, and I will reimburse you 100% of the cost. Then I tried to continue to run ads, but at this point I'm burning a hole in my wallet, right? Like, have I dug myself in a hole that's too far down? That is the question that I continually ask myself and I also kind of lost the, the drive that I once had because it was very disheartening and constantly I'm being dragged in different directions, right? So I stopped prioritizing it, which obviously was not good, especially since the company wasn't profitable even then. So I decided, you know what? I'm done with this, I'm gonna do a blowout sale, right? Just like, I don't know, any of these retail stores. And so what I'm gonna do is, I am going to use Amazon's calculator, which they give you, and I'm going to figure out what my break-even price is. Now this is a break-even price after Amazon FBA fees, uh, and how much profit I'm gonna make after the sale price, I want it to be zero. So I'm technically still in the negatives because I'm not accounting for the cost of the product and ship it there and all my time and I paid those freelancers for the packaging artwork and that kind of thing. But it would be better for me to get the product in other people's hands than me to just have Amazon dispose of essentially 500 mouses wireless mouses, right? Like that would be a waste. Now this did not work either. And the reason for that is because like I said earlier in the video, price indicates value to the customer. So I was selling this product for 10 to 15 bucks and I was getting on average three or four star reviews, right? Like probably close to four star reviews on average at like 14 bucks a piece. When I sold this product for like $4.88 or something, I was getting more returns than I had gotten 
months prior. Like it wasn't even close. And the way that Amazon FBA works is if a customer wants to return a product, it gets returned. And the reason for that is because it doesn't have to be approved by you, the seller. It's approved by Amazon's customer support. And Amazon's customer support will literally approve any single return. And you have no say in it. So the perceived value when people receive the product is, this is a $4 mouse, this is a piece of garbage. I want to return this. So they return it. Now I have to pay for all that shipping, that inventory fee, yada, 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 with Amazon, now I'm losing money and I just lost an inventory item. So, how much did I make or lose? Well, as you can guess, I lost money and how much? I don't really wanna know. Uh, it's quite certainly a lot, but for the sake of this video, because I told you I would do it, I'm gonna list the price here. And if I can, I'm gonna list even the breakdown of the price. I don't know if I really need to summarize lessons learned here, but I, cause I feel like I kind of did that throughout the video, but the idea that Amazon FBA is as simple as buying a product overseas and then selling it in the U S market is vastly oversimplified. And it's enlightened me to a lot of different business lessons that I've learned. But the largest one that I'm at least leaning towards is that if you want to sell a product, it may be best to sell in a class of one. This is a, a teaching that Alex Ramazzi holds, which is if you want to sell a product, sell a product in a class of one, meaning there's no comparables to that product. And if your customer can't compare your product to anything else on the market, you can charge whatever you want. This concept is explained a lot more along with various other topics in his two books that he has released. Now, I don't make commission on you buying his book. And in fact, you don't even have to pay a dime for his book if you don't want to. Go to Spotify, search his name, Alex Ramazzi, and he literally has the audiobook of every single chapter of his book for free. Yeah. That's pretty much all I got for this video. Lost a lot of money, but hopefully in the process, it saved you a lot of money. Certainly taught me a lot. Check out Alex Ramazzi's stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, Ali.